Yeah. All right. I call this meeting to order the Ad Hoc Community Center Committee for the Town of Scarborough, Maine. It is uh, Monday, February 12th, it's uh, 7.04 p.m. And we'll just go around. I'm Patrick O'Reilly, Chair. Uh, Liz Stanford, um, President, Ad Hoc Committee Member. Gwen Simons, Committee Member. Alex Marshall, Committee Member. Bob uh, Sousa, Town Liaison. Amelia Dow, Committee Member. And then we have those all uh jim is online committee oh, member jim okay jim i think he's yeah and then we've got uh keith and scott from our consultants tonight perfect um jim can you hear us all right yes okay okay thank you um and then we had sent out the meeting minutes from uh january 16th um and motion to approve those minutes so I'll just say so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Second. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> any discussion on the minutes at all? Didn't read it. I didn't either, but make sure my name is spelled right. <laughs> uh, it is. Awesome. All in favor? Yeah. Signed. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, and then we have a pretty ambitious program to go through, so we'll kick it right off and Get it over to Keith. Take it away. Great. Uh, I, I don't have much of a show today, but we've got Scott uh, Karen from Ballard King today uh, here, who's who's uh, been working alongside uh, Darren to put together the operational analysis. And so, you know, we've we've circulated uh, the the first draft of that as long as well as the um, the uh, uh, program that we've been working on. And so now is, is the opportunity to for Scott to really go, you know, as uh, into as much detail as as we need to 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 look at the under the hood of the operational analysis um, and talk about changes that we want to make to the, the building program. And that will uh, really set us up going going forward. So we can make the uh, required updates and and really just just uh, keep the program uh, moving forwards and and work uh, work towards the next the next steps of the process. So I'll just throw it to uh, Scott. He's got um, uh, PowerPoint to, to help facilitate the discussion. And, and I can, I, I've got uh, our previous slides and everything. So if we ever wanted to look at, um, you know, some of the uh, program sizes or the matrix that we sent out, et cetera, yeah, I can, I can pull that up. And Scott, Keith, just so you know, uh, everybody has a printed copy of the building program option, uh, the assumption sheet. And then I didn't print the, um, I printed the operational stuff. The first head page is not the not the dial down, but just so we have over some room. And you're both co-hosts now, so. Okay, great. So um, I'll uh, go over a little presentation, kind of summarizing all of those documents that uh, that you guys have seen, and and if there is somewhere along the way that you would like for me to stop, please don't hesitate to. Uh, to, to say something or raise your hand, I'll try to uh, keep an eye out on the, the screen for those items. So uh, the first thing that, that we do whenever we are putting together an operational plan is we develop a few assumptions. And uh, so, you know, we, we start, start this uh, process um, in general because we've, we've operated and done enough of these types of things to, to have some general questions and ideas and thoughts as to how facilities uh, could be operated, but we want to make sure that they are aligning with the the local, uh, you know, presence and and how you guys have done things in the past or uh, things to consider. And so, the the ones that we put together here. So as you can see on our screen is uh, we're assuming that the 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 town is the one that's going to be operating this. We've seen a, a couple of different models where uh, in in other locations where there's a nonprofit that'll run it or there'll be an, another department that'll run it. Those kind of things. So we want to make sure that that's uh, that's the case here. Uh, the second thing is uh, the bulk of the services will be done in house as opposed to contracted. There's always going to be some contracts. Uh, for spe specialty maintenance. Uh, spe typically, those are elevator, HVAC, uh, backflow preventers, some of those types of items, as well as some contract uh, con contracting for, for programs, which is that, that next item. Uh, the city uh, has a, a, a fair amount of programs that they run either in-house or uh, through their part-time seasonal staff. So, uh, but sometimes programs are delivered uh, a little bit differently. 
Um, we recommend that, that the town would purchase weight equipment uh, and lease cardio equipment. And the reason for that is uh, weight equipment really doesn't change tremendously uh, throughout, the, throughout the years and the maintenance of those items is pretty small. Uh, typically, uh, you will be able to utilize weight equipment. You may have to supplement or something, but you can typically get anywhere from 12 to 15 years. And we've seen clients even take longer uh, with those that those pieces of equipment. So you may you'll have to reupholster, you'll have to add some weights, you'll have to do some some small things, but the the uh, but the ownership of that is much better off when when the town is the owner of that equipment. Whereas on the cardio side, um, depending on on the level of use, uh, it, it wears out pretty quick. Um, it's kind of like a car. And so the, the more you utilize it, then the, the more maintenance that goes into it. And so we would recommend uh, that, that you uh, would have a lease option for that type of equipment. The other part of it, so the, the maintenance costs get to be pretty, pretty sizable, uh, the, the older equipment is. Uh, the second part is uh, the technology for treadmills, ellipticals, step machines, bikes, uh, is is changing rapidly, as we all know, with other types of technology, and so uh, it allows for having uh, that that newer equipment within a facility uh, when when you're able to to lease uh, the equipment. The next item is uh, credit card. Uh, we assume a, a three percent charge on credit cards. Uh, and then also a 1% on IT. And typically that is for recreational software packages. Uh, that's typically the, the cost that is associated with, with those. Uh, and then the last item, which is probably just as important as anything on here, is we want facilities to be set up for success and to be able to uh, have the opportunity to replace equipment and not compete against other um, priorities within a, a, a town or a city when it comes to having uh, some significant issues or challenges with equipment or facility items, such as HVAC, boilers, um, you know, you have uh, pull pumps, those types of items. And so what we recommend is uh, having an annual um, uh, sinking fund essentially set aside. In this case, it would be $150,000 that's set aside annually, uh, at least for the first five years, so that it would accumulate. And then you'd be able to use uh, the, typically uh, communities can then use the interest that are uh, garnered off of that to be able to pay for uh, some items. But then when there are large scale items like replating, replacing uh, the, the uh, a boiler or um, the, the uh, cooling tower, replacing uh, the coils on an HVAC unit, uh, that are 15, 20, 25 thousand dollars and up, that you have an accumulated fund balance there to be able to to uh, do that uh, without having to go uh, compete against potentially another department uh, wanting or needing uh, to replace or to do things. So uh, those are some stop of the in. general assumptions to start off with. Can I just jump in for a second on that? Um, so the, the credit card charges, you're assuming that we have an, ex an, an expense that will be equal to 3% of all the revenues for the facility? Um, yeah, it's, so I'm trying to think how we built this one. Typically, um, we do 3% uh, of all of total revenue. Um, any more credit cards are, are, are anywhere from, it's, depending on some of the facilities, are anywhere from 80 to 90% of, of total revenue. Um, so, um, that's we in this case against. Uh, I should have started from the beginning. Uh, we do take a conservative approach when we put these operational models together, and so one of the reasons why we do that type of thing is just it's an it's it is a little bit more uh, overall on the expense. But again, uh, you may not see that that type of issue. But uh, so but, Todd, the town, the state of Maine has laws that don't allow any business except for the government, local or state, to charge consumer for the convenience fee of using a credit card. So you don't see yeah. cash and credit prices at gas stations in Maine. Yep. But the right. town can. The and, town they, can. And, they, and they do in the tax office. And they do. And we just started in our department this season because the software that we use RecTrack presently is the first time they started to let us capture. So before, what we would do is build an offsetting expense. Like when we built our expense out, it would say, okay, you know, we bring in, you know, a million dollars in credit cards. 
a certain percentage that we write off as an expense. Mm -hmm. um, so you just well, go we don't have to do it anymore. What's that? We, we wouldn't have to. We do wouldn't it. have to do it anymore. And again, it's charged off automatically. So when they register a program online, that fee is attached to their credit card. And a lot of things with centers is that recurring payments, and well, that's why a lot of them are um, heavy percentage of credit card use. Mm -hmm. Because again, some people pay in full, but a lot of people pay monthly installments, so it's a recurring hit. So I'm just sure. want to make sure that we capture it because that's a that's a pretty big haircut if it's just an expense on this side. So it should be a revenue line item also that should be offsetting for the analysis, right? Well, I think yeah. And so that's what I'll and I didn't double check. I did make a note to dig into that a little more, Scott, because I will also check for your numbers. Uh, and again, it, the software that we have doesn't mean it'd be the software if this facility went forward, right? So, mm -hmm. but I'll I'll get them the exact numbers, um, percentage that we're getting charged now okay. um, to see. I, I think we should absolutely look at that because if people want to have yeah. that convenience of that recurrence yeah. or whatever, then that, right. We should, and then it's a wash. Okay. But have I a, a, a revenue and an expense. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, um, so right now, right now that expense, you know, has a sixty-three thousand um, dollar right. line item within the budget, and so essentially you could re remove that, which would would provide a, a greater cost recovery, obviously. But great. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention the. I don't know how this works with it with the I'm gonna call it a reserve fund, yeah. the CIP allocation. Um so if we have a reserve fund in there, so we have a a constitutional issue in the in the town where any any capital expenditure over four hundred thousand dollars has to go to the voters. So I don't know how a reserve fund would work in that capacity. I just don't know. We'd have to talk to the finance office to see how that would work. What's that? What's the limit? What's the limit? Uh, well, it just went to seven fifty this year. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. So what I think, you know, what's happened in the past, we have a reserve beach account where if depending on which purview uh, things lie in, like when I do my capital planning now, if I'm going to purchase something out of the reserve account, I would do it during my budget process. So I'd say, okay, I need to replace the boardwalk at Pine Point, And I put that $30,000 in earmark it as a reserve account. So then council would have to vote on those reserve accounts usually live in council's purview. Sometimes they're written where town managers can have a threshold of, okay, $10,000, you can use a reserve account or above. Um, but I assume when we're getting into using a reserve account, we would still have to match our, whatever process we have in town. So for example, his boiler example, I put in my CIP, a $50,000 for a boiler replacement. It would go through the whole budget process and they would just get paid for from the reserve account versus having to go to the voter to say, I need $50,000 for black. So we anticipated that this reserve is going to come from user fees or from taxpayer money? Well, I think that's a debate, Scott. I think it's politically how you look at it because the building and the model, when it gets to it, is not 100% self funded. Right. So really, mm -hmm. it depends which way you want to look at it, right? They may say no because we don't, we're not break even. Um, or they may say, you know, Yes, because we want to build it so it's sustainable on its own model. That's going to be a council charge. Mm -hmm. Your your reserve account is based off of revenues that you're bringing in and setting aside, correct? Not. No, it's a CIP budget item, I would assume. Uh, yeah. Right now for the beaches? Yeah. Yeah, so presently, the way our CIP works right now is if we have a million dollar budget and I bring in a million one, that one goes to the reserve account for the so beaches. Any revenue overages you have goes to the beaches. are underexpended because it's a wash. So those two things get pushed to... The reserve account so i think it just right. here yeah. it would be depending on how it's set up and if um, you're under just nothing goes into the cip if not or some years with the reserve account mm -hmm. they go get it so if yeah. I, I say i need a million dollars in revenue and i only make 900 they'll yeah. go get 100 out of the reserve yeah. to right. make us whole yeah. most years i underspend by 100 to try to keep it net neutral yeah but that's keeps it from impacting the tax rate yeah um yeah. so yeah. Okay. so there could be ways to it may not be the first 150 but we could say okay anything over our revenue projection and they would have to be able to charge like you, you know right. those things of how it's going to work but yeah. i think the key here is to say this is something that needs to be considered because when you also you know gym floor buckles or something happens and you need to go replace a two three hundred thousand dollar expense yeah. every day it's not working you're losing revenue and it's like a business it's not like you can do an assessment to your members or anything like that right just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so, different than a CIP, I mean, a CIP allocation is voted on Annual annual allocation that you can't just pull from to offset expenses in your operating budget. Right. That's nope. a dedicated dollar amount going toward a particular project or facility. So it's it's yeah. sitting in that bucket and it can right. only go towards 
the community yeah. center if the I council mean, has approved it as such. Yeah. yeah. And that can build, I would imagine that can build up. Yeah. And how we do it is like, well, you know, certain facilities like the golf course or the ice arena, they just do it every other year, $50,000 CIP for just general maintenance right. and improvements. And that can just sit in the that just sits in their CIP right. account until it's needed for yeah. whatever project. But can we go back to credit card charges for me? Sure. Or um, since you've started doing that, have, has, have people stopped using credit cards? No. No? Are they using yeah. this ACHing an option? Uh, yes. Yeah. And do it inside. And it depends on the software. Like certain automatic payments, you can use an ACH yeah. credit. You know, some people use they use in both. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we could get our exact language and I could get it to Scott uh, and then kind of refine that model. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's a big number. You know, a percentage would be a big number. Right. You know, or right. half That's a percent. A yeah. So just let the record show Gene Marie having a uh, so can. town council rep to the committee has come in <laughs> following a meeting that I'm sure she was very upset to be with her. Yeah. Well, you yeah. <laughs> know. Thanks, Scott. Anything else on that? Oh, sorry. Nope. Okay. All right. Thank you, Scott. Sorry for the diversion. No, no. All, all good. Good discussion. And that's that's why we're here. So, um, so kind of going uh, another step on the assumptions, um, utility costs. Uh, typically within a facility, uh, your 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 bit the biggest line item is your personnel, and then utilities are typically going to be second, um, just because the the nature of those those facilities, especially when you have indoor pools and having to de dehumidification and you have to heat and cool uh, that facility uh, year round. Uh, next item is liability insurance. Uh, sometimes uh, this is covered by other areas within uh, the city or the town's budget, uh, but in this case, we we included um, a, a liability insurance line item. And then the last item there is that you are currently paying uh, rent to the tune of three hundred sixty-four thousand uh, dollars, and so you wouldn't have to pay that annually. And so that's kind of a that's a credit essentially back on the operations. Uh, because you don't have that expense overall to to the town. Uh, Does that help only? Yeah, so just clarification. I did change it on the assumption sheet you guys have. That number is rent, part-time staff, utilities. That's a lump net sum of everything it takes to operate that building over the course of the year. So the hub building. The hub building, yeah. So that's something presently that is in our budget. And we... When when we talked about our divisions, we offset that from revenue from other from programming. And that the liability insurance number, Scott, is that a, a national average that you're using there? It is, yes, sir. Oh. Yeah. And so I can get a finer detail on our end. Yeah. And we, again, a little different from us. Our IT stuff lives in the IT department. Liabilities lounge in the town manager. But when they're looking at, hey, what's this going to raise the whole tax rate? We can. Run it, but I'll confirm right. what our local kind of liability is. Well, the liability is through Maine Municipal Association. So and basically yeah. a self funded pool at state level. Right. For all so I'm not even sure if it's that high, but I can yeah. get you a, a confirmation yeah. on that. Yeah. And, and the, the main point on all of these is uh, I guess we try to identify every item that we can think of. Um, and yes. even though it's not, I, it, it may not end up falling within this facility's budget overall it's got to come out of some bucket somewhere. Right. And so that's right. what we, you know, so that's what we, we, we see a lot of um, when we go through these first rounds, especially they're like, all right, well, that's going to be paid by public works. That's going to be paid by police department. That's going to be paid by, you know, HR and those kind of things. And so uh, we, that's, that's the reason why we, we like to got to go through all of this kind of things. Good. Um, and then lastly, there is just the, the tentative uh, hours of operation. Um, and, and again, the, the important part of this is because, as I mentioned, personnel costs are typically your, your largest um, expense overall. And so we want to make sure that, that we're uh, having staff schedules align with the hours of operation. So mm -hmm. my first thought on that is, have you you've balanced that with potential revenue? Because Sunday morning to me seems like a time where there might be revenue generated or no. Oh, like before 10 o'clock? I yeah. think that um, it depends on your model. Uh, 
a lot of times it's just staffing. You know, it's 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 like sometimes those Sundays they use it for rental potential. Okay. You know what I mean? Where we've had events or practices or or maybe it's a adult leagues go in the morning. You know, okay. open to open stuff where membership time. So I think so that, we could still use it for revenue purposes, but not have the staff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. A lot of these times are, you know, to the public, and then each section is kind of managed off. Got it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, and and, and um, if you go through like the 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 actual um, budget, you know, all of those line items, typically we'll have, um, and in here we have like community rooms, and most of those rentals would occur during the normal hours of operation, but certainly there that's not to say that they couldn't be done after hours and then you typically would cost would you associate the staffing cost with them. Um so yes ma'am. Uh so with this facility we've identified um uh, full time staff uh, of 17 positions. Uh, probably the 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 one that we note the most often is the challenge with finding lifeguards um, and especially in the early morning and daytime hours. And so that's why we recommend uh, a town and a facility like this have full-time staff uh, for those positions uh, because trying to find uh, college and high school students to, to work part-time hours um, is, is, is proves to be really challenging. And so again, we, we recommend having four uh, lifeguards that are full time that can work those off hours essentially um, and provide that super direct supervision uh, of the pool itself. Can I just take a, um, with the staffing when Darren and I were chatting about the staffing? There's a lot of full time staff there, and um, I was having not 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 debates but conversations with Darren regarding well, do I need a sports coordinator, um, you know, or do I don't, and and so. We just agreed to put them in this first model because you go down to three gyms, you're holding a lot of tournaments, you're holding a lot of functions. You get down to one or two, you know, and the other part of this conversation until we get to the end is I can't tell you what my staff capacity is going to be in two or three years as far as, you know, am I going to be, I mean, I could tell you today, could somebody pick up some of these roles? I couldn't tell you in three years. You know, would somebody be able to do it? So talking about skill sets, skill sets, or just capacity. Where like my rec programmer right now, I could say, okay, we could probably pick it up. But when you when you build out other programs, the responsibilities change. I couldn't guarantee we could make the projected revenue. So we just decided to fully fully vet the building, and as it gets closer or or scope changes, then we can dial it down accordingly. Because uh, my previous job, uh, building it funded, things change. And they started cutting staff, and you could never make the revenue projections because you couldn't just, you couldn't be everywhere. You mm -hmm. couldn't have programming, you couldn't have, and so it was just a completely tough model to say we're filling things all the time. So I just agreed to go this way and give them um, uh, the, the full position realm that he, that he said it would take to run the building as if we weren't sharing roles. Or the other thing, too, with this is that, you know, having a maintenance superintendent, I might have somebody on staff now that I promote in three years and bring in a lower cost employee to backfill that other position. So those things can can offset the staff thing. So so Todd, I have uh, two questions. Um, one is, are these um, anticipated salaries at <clears throat> today's market rates or in three years or five years or whenever the building gets done? So what I did just to, for, to be safe is I looked at if I was hiring somebody today and then I did a normal scale like three years out. So it's okay. kind of a rough, a rough just take, you know, we get a step every year kind of pushing it out there. So, and the only other thing I'd say on the, my comment on the um, benefits and taxes and everything, I think that was estimated at like third, well, looks like 30 to 50% or somewhere I read 35%. 35%. Yeah. That's incredibly high from my experience. I've run a lot of businesses and that's way more than, than I've pretty standard seen. for municipal. It, it's, yeah. For, yeah, for government. It is pretty standard for municipal yeah. side of things. I had the same reaction also is 20, 20, 25 percent in the private sector, but it's another 10 or 15 percent higher. Okay. Yeah. Salaries are usually lower, benefits. It's got nothing to do with me. That's it's got to do with state. That's why that's why okay. the, the state these values, right? 
uh, the salaries don't seem low either. Oh, really? I these, thought they were a little low. They seem, these seem low to me, but the benefit yeah. is higher. That's, that's the, that's the that thing. Is, yeah. okay. People work in the yeah. governmental and nonprofit positions a lot of times because the benefits are really good, but they sacrifice the lower salary. Yeah, okay. The that's the trade-off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely see that. Yeah, the, the question about the coordinators, like the sports, the fitness, and the program yeah. coordinators seem like they could be... Yeah, they could be consolidated. Right. Yeah, they could be consolidated, and and like even the fitness coordinator, I left it in there when we were talking, but we did talk about how do we subcontract some of those classes and that sort of stuff. But again, in this first run of the model, those are places to reduce, and then but and then you could go back and use a 70-30 cost cost or a sixty forty, you know, on on aerobics classes or. And the the director is not your position. That's the director no, of the facility. No, that is that is director of the facility. Yeah. Somebody that that is his or her ultimate responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and I've worked in in a number of of facilities uh, and, and in communities that that have had this type of model. Um, so I was in in Missouri. Um, I had a 63,000 square foot uh, indoor recreation center that had uh, pretty much the same model as what you guys are looking at. It had two gyms as opposed to three. Um, and I had, uh, counting myself, I didn't have four full-time lifeguards because at the time, uh, lifeguards, you did you could kind of uh, use part-time. Um, but I, I had um, 13, or no, I had 12 full-time staff, including myself. So if you had the four lifeguards here, that's 16. So just to kind of give you an idea, um, it's pretty similarly aligned um, with what um, my experience personally in, in running a similarly sized facility. And again, it, uh -huh. it, you know, as was mentioned, it's, you know, the, the full-time staff in order to maximize that revenue uh, potential, you really have to have designated uh, staff uh, that, that can, can meet that model. Um, and again, it, we have seen a number of places that have combined roles there. Uh, again, we kind of take the approach of it at first, especially as when we set these up is here are all the items and the things that we think you you could do to set you up for success uh, in the best way possible. We know there's a, a certain amount of uh, expenditures associated with that. And then we can pare down uh, based on uh, moving forward. Um, the, the challenge is always when you see at first blush, when you see the overall recapture rate or recovery rate, and then you're like, oh, let's add this and add this and add this. And then that recovery rate goes down. Um, we'd rather kind of work work off the backwards. So, right. And again, just some other things. And Alex was just here. I don't know if you heard Scott, but like certain things like the sports and fitness coordinators. you know, those are potential roles that could be combined and then you build it out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we won't know. I, I deal with all the town facility right now, and that that part of my division is getting bigger and bigger. And we're going after a maintenance tech this year in the budget to serve town buildings. So in two years, there may be like, we don't need a maintenance tech because we have somebody in my facilities department could handle that sort of stuff. But if you don't, you know, paying somebody $46,000 a year is a lot cheaper than I pay for a lot of contracted service right now to fix over the course of a, a building fix and repair. Um, mm -hmm. I did ask... Um, Darren, in my conversations, is that, you know, there's always a decision, like, again, theoretically, a maintenance tech, a building's brand new. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, hopefully nothing's broken. But <laughs> the challenge is if you don't build it into your scope at the beginning, it's tough to get it down the road, you know. And and, and so, mm -hmm. uh, again, starting at that kind of and then making those decisions as we get down to space um, where you want to tighten things up in the projection. So, Well, I'd rather have you start like this with room to, uh, I hate to use the word cut, but yeah. cut or cut back right. if we make big, choices for right, right, to make the choices. Oh, but let's start with what makes sense and would be the perfect right. This is scenario. maximum operation. Right, trying to gain maximum right. build and maximum expectation. This is the full program. This is the full program. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So. So the the next. Uh, next item after we get over all, all over all of the uh, fun expenditure side of things uh, is on the the revenue and so the the primary uh, revenue generator for the facility is through membership and so these are membership raised based 
on that the market there in Scarlesboro and then surrounding areas. So we took a look at a number of different facilities, what the market could could hold and kind of looked at the sliding scale. And this is kind of this is where we we fell when it came to uh, those the the rates uh, that would be associated with it. Um, and so, as you can see, there's both a resident and a non-resident rate, um, both on on the you know membership side as well as on the daily admissions. And I would assume, Scott, at some point when we get to the final report, we'll have a table showing your data points and your comparisons for this, like the local facilities around here, what they charge or, you know, com comparables. Yeah, I'll, I'll, check, I'll, I'll check with Darren as to what he had on that. I know, but I know that's, he had to, you know, he pulled that information to be able to to put that together. Yes, sir. So I think that that'll be a question we get asked. Absolutely. Hey, are we, are we in the ballpark here? Is this a rate to do our facility or how compares, how com mm -hmm. comparable. comparable, thank you. <laughs> are we two facilities around us? You know, so we're not over or under, but in that sweet spot for competition points. Yeah. Todd, in in your experience, do you get pushback from town people saying we're paying for this with our taxes? Why do I have to pay? I think it wanted to, it's the upfront message. And again, regarding okay. the building, yep. you know, I mean what we're doing. Um, you know, you, any building we build, you pay through taxes. The 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 thing about this is that then people have to decide is that value right. For my family or myself and that's why a lot of times i know for me in my where i live now i only do a winter membership i don't huh. use the building in the summer huh. um because i'm not a lap swimmer and i'm out on my bike versus stuff and so i think depending on what you wear and it's not that it's not a good value i just don't when the kids were in the house right 12 month membership yeah. rainy day yeah. we're going to the pool yeah please don't kill each other you know yeah. what i mean it's like i can i can just hear that yeah i mean i'm thinking you know yeah. obviously from my role i yeah. don't have an issue yeah. with it but but again you know, what they're getting out of this and they don't have to pay this if they don't and do we have scholarships available yeah i mean we would families? implement all mm -hmm. the things that yeah. we have presently okay. scholarships yeah. um my facility, previous one, we used to do one day a month that was resident days. Oh, cool. Yeah. Know, just kind of, yeah. yeah, it was good marketing. Come get a taste. You could plan one day to come out and try. Just yep. ways to. Okay. That, so. Thank the, you. Um, the daily rates on the non residents are, um, they're, they would be less expensive to pay every day than to get a monthly membership. Good. Yeah. So on the youth, if on the resident, if they pay ten dollars a day, um, they do better to just get the month. But on the other side, it's not that way. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You see that? So it'd be thirty month, thirty days, three hundred dollars. Right. They're paying three, but that's three sixty for the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are annual fees. So if they bought an those annual, are annual fees. Annual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are annual fees there. So it's a hell of a deal. Yeah, yeah. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Rates. So when you talk about affordability. That's how you sell it. Yeah, so the, yeah, so those are daily rates. Wow. The only thing I question, and again, this would be a decision you guys would make down the road when Darren was doing these, was we used to have a, you see there's a family membership, but there's not a family daily rate. And so we used to have, and again, it's a choice going down the yeah. road. We used to make a family daily rate um, just because it was something that, you know, if you do this and you get three kids and two people, you know, you could be paying fifty four right. dollars to come in for the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I mean, so we can yeah. those are decisions that you can make philosophically yeah. and those can be added into it. I will say from the person behind the desk, it's like, you know, me and my brother showed up with the three kids. That's not family. You know, <laughs> we're we're related, but we're not a household. Right, you know yeah. what I mean. So it was, I mean, but those are things we negotiate with policies in the background. But Scott, maybe just label that so it's clear next time we or, or whatever it gets down the pike to be presented to somebody else. Just have that be monthly rates on the top section there. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, no. and, and, yes. and, and, and annual rates. So. Yep. Like Three hundred sixty a month. Yeah. <laughs> is there a is there a a set formula in general of non resident versus resident? I mean, I feel like the non resident is. Not that high. Yeah, it is twenty five percent on this sheet. I mean, is that is that a standard thing? Well, we see we see a lot of places that are fifty percent above um, the resident rate, but it's it's you know typically 
um, you know, we rely on on you guys to to help us determine what that what that is. So um, yeah, in this this instance, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we used uh, just twenty five percent. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the are those rates um, for access to everything, the pool, the gym, everything, and including classes, or is it? No, he's shaking his head. You, we no. So when I read through it, Scott, you can yeah. You, I think those are the choices we make too along the way, but most of the times, it's it's uh, use of the building, and then maybe certain classes. And I'm not sure how how far Darren dug into it. Like with mine, I had my four or five basic aerobic classes that if I could fit four people or I could fit four hundred. Yeah. Those were part of the the general membership fee. Because it was kind of like an extra bonus, like I rather than paying a ten dollar aerobic fee, I'm gonna right. might as well get a monthly membership and now invest it. But the classes that had limited seats, spin, yoga, you know, plot, you know, limited seats, those are ones you paid for a session because that was an exclusive and you or exclusive, right? Yeah, and any um, classes where we're bringing somebody in from the outside and doing a profit split would right. have to be yep. um yep. extra. Darren, I made a note. I'm sorry, Scott. I made a note to talk um, to review the non-resident thought with the, with these guys to be able to update Darren and yourself and Keith to say, hey, kind of this is where we feel comfortable. I know in my previous life, I kept, I always did a lot of research on and data driven on what the municipality, what the average taxpayer paid in to offset the building. And I always made sure I tried to make sure the non-resident rate was that gap. Mm -hmm. So when everybody mm -hmm. came in together, I considered you an equal. You weren't a non-resident. Once you paid your non-resident membership, it might be that you know a taxpayer pays $100 a month towards the general operation of the building because we're not 100% self-funded. And then I kind of looked at that to go offsetting that cost with the non-residents to make sure that you know they were paying their fair share to offset the building too. Right. Yeah. And then everybody came through and it was like, tax. you are now a member. Yeah. You weren't a resident member. You were not a non-resident member you're all part of the building, you know, so that helped with donations and fundraisers and just goodwill when you're trying to do that, that stuff. So, so that hasn't happened here. We, I haven't done that exercise and I don't, I don't know where Darren grabbed the difference in, again, I think it's just a flat 25%, which is yeah. pretty standard. Yeah. But I think we could choose where we want to see that gap. I guess the question Scott, that I would have that I want Darren to answer, or you guys to answer is, and again, it ultimately, I don't know if you can answer it, it ultimately comes down to the size of the facility. Because based on our population and based on how many people we think we're going to get from memberships, I would rather see, and again, a non resident can be mad at me, but I'd rather see a higher non resident rate to ensure my residents have first front access. Oh, yeah. And if you want to pay premium to come join us, you do. But if this is too affordable, then there might be too much pressure if the building's not big enough. Hundred percent. You know what I mean. So yeah, I agree with that. that resident primary. And I this agree. This is always a battle. I agree with that. But if we're going to rely on non-resident revenue to make the numbers work, yeah. then we've got to make it still be within the market range. Absolutely, and that's why kind of Cost. figuring out what what Darren used for market schedules and kind of yeah. what else is around us, and and then it ultimately comes down to. Once the final building program is done, because right now we're going off of what was on the main sheet, right? The big sheet that you mm -hmm. guys got. If that thing dials down, then your rates probably dial down a little bit because there's not as much to use. And so I, I'll, I'll get clarification on that as far as what Darren used for a kind of a mm -hmm. bench model, if that makes sense of how mm -hmm. that scales a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is a big issue. I mean, this is a pretty important. Yep, absolutely. I think this, I'm, I'm starring this one so I can do a yep. little more digging. And yeah. this drives all the financials, obviously. Well, it drives the financials, and again, when you look at you're getting into your your non-resident um, that's good. This on the other sheet. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was trying to see how much without putting off the spreadsheet and screwing up with Zoom, and I'll never get back. How much <laughs> revenue and number of memberships were? Um, yeah. For so re on so members. Mem yeah. members memberships as far as revenue is concerned overall are, are essentially 50 percent of all revenue um and then the way because of the the way that the memberships broke out on this one then 
or membership, then, you know, it, it's essentially a million dollars generated through memberships. Okay. And about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 60% uh, of that is, re is residents, 40% non-residents. So um, it, you're, you're right. It, it, somebody mentioned that this is a big issue is, is there's a couple of different philosophies on how you handle non-residents. Um, if you have a very popular facility and then you want to ensure that you're, you're absolutely correct. You want your residents who are paying the capital cost typically of that facility to to be able to utilize it. So you would have a higher non-resident cost. If you want to really drive revenue, if one of the intents is to really ensure that this is paying for itself, then you know having a lower uh, non-resident fee could drive additional uh, attendance participation and use. So it, 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 you do get into a little bit of a push pull when it comes to residents versus non-residents. And um, again, it's, it's a, it is a truly a philosophical issue that a lot of different places struggle with um, and how to, how to get it right. So. Scott, how many members did, did that number include? I, I did a, just a gross divided your 1,026,000 by 480, the number of the cost of a membership that was kind of in the middle of all your numbers. And it came out to 2,137 members, um, so, which sounds like a lot, maybe. I don't know if that's high for this, um, a community of this population. Do you, how did you sure. come up with that 1 million? Yep, it's a it's a great question. So uh, we we based it on memberships, um, and so we came up with a total of about sixteen hundred total membership units. Um, so that's the the total number that about a thousand resident, six hundred uh, non resident. Um, so a thousand membership units or members um, is about a ten percent household penetration uh, for Scarsboro. Uh, the industry is anywhere from, um, again, it depends on alternative providers and all those kind of things. Um, we see as low as 8% uh, penetration, but we also see as high as 18% uh, penetration as far as membership is concerned. Um, so you're at 10%, kind of on that lower, low, what we put on the lower side of that. Um, most of the time when we build these models, uh, we're using anywhere in that 10 to 12%. So um, again, we, we try to be pretty conservative. We don't want to set you up for uh, for failure um, in, in trying to over, yeah, over that's good. <laughs> I'd rather be on the low percent and over deliver. Well, that uh, exactly that may, that means we've got lots of potential opportunity to do better than anticipated. There's upside here. Yeah. yeah. We do. So what's the difference of resident non-resident? Uh, well, Scarborough's made the choice. It's 140 for resident. They haven't changed that. A decade yeah. and non resident, I think, is up to 150. Plus, we have the free seniors. Yeah, it's $10 more. Resident $110, $150 versus 40. Oh, versus 40. You mm -hmm. couldn't use it before. I thought you said 140. Okay, I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> you said 140 like, and 150. Wow, it's oh, gone up. 40, 40, 40 <laughs> and 150. Yeah. And do we have a like, is and we don't have to, I'm just curious, trying to get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we get a lot of Non mm -hmm. We get more than you would think, oh, yeah. but again, there's those other things. And again, we didn't dive deep into this, but this choice, like when we moved, we probably got another hundred non-residents this year because we raised the Saturday price to thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Until they bought well, they the came ten, They came eleven right. times. They break even. But this, right. it's the same thing here. We're yeah. gonna, we are going to have something that no other community has in the same way that we have beach that other. No, right. Other so story. again, I think that. Again, this is kind of that sweet middle of the spot, middle of the road. Yeah. I think we can kind of, we can look at the, kind of vet what's around us. Yeah. You know? We can double check with Darren, kind of what that looks like. We can, because again, in my mind, if, if this building were to come to fruition and you had a lap pool and you had a rec pool, yeah. no one's got a rec pool. Right. No one, mm -hmm. you got a no, no one has a rec pool. You know what I mean? And this would be the newest pool in the state. And you can't so get like, into the <clears throat> gyms that do exist. So, right. so, there's, so there's a lot, even though there's a lot around us, new is good. And great design is even better. And you know, access. where it's convenient, where I can right. take my daughter over and sit in three inches of water and play, and my son's in the 
you know, son's in the lap over practice and my wife's up on a bike. Like and it's five minutes from 95. And it's five minutes from 95 or how many people work in Scarborough versus out of Scarborough. Right. And again, average low penetration rate. So I think there's a, I mean, honestly, if anything else Scarborough does, it draws good, draws well. And so I think budgeting average to low and knowing there's higher ceilings or potential to go at this first stage, I think is totally appropriate. Um, and then, like I said, wiggling down, I'd rather wiggle down a salary or split positions and and then have to chase more revenue and feel like I'm just banging people at Shaw's like, hey, I don't have a membership. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's just, if it, and again, when you talk about the full-time positions, having custodians, always having somebody on duty where they're cleaning toilets and, hey, pick up a spill and it's the building is clean all the time. Yeah. Those set you apart for buildings that struggle. And so having that, yeah. and then it also helps with long-term maintenance and just your reputation, right? Right. We show up, the pool's always warm, the deck is always clean, and the locker rooms are tidy. That's a lot, right? It is a lot. It's, it means yeah. huge amount, especially in days of health and wellness. And yes. Sanitation. Right. Like when you walk in a locker room and it's like the swim team's there, you don't have a custodian here, she can't go in there after and mop that. Parents are a little freaky. You know what I mean? It just, it's a different day and age than it was a long time ago. So I think what they've modeled up makes sense and then room to massage if you want up or down does it make sense to break that down into monthly payments for what we're seeing you hear that just be, just, i'm just thinking like typically that's how a lot of people pay for their yeah. that's how they think about it, their, it's they think about it and it's and yeah. it's a little yeah. more palatable when yeah. you see the number of a monthly payment right. it should be about an when we talk about a public presentation breaking Correct. down by yeah. months and i know what i did in my old building was um this was the pay in full number and if you wanted to get a monthly installment, I added five dollars a month because then that paid all the credit all card right. fees. And so again, when somebody again, if your monthly rates are reasonable, it's just a way to recover costs. But it depends on how everything else is getting. Paid Maybe for. do that, but don't do it for seniors. Yeah, I mean again, it depends on. I mean, this they baked all the costs, and that's why they're doing the one percent for credit cards. I mean, three percent for credit card. Yeah. Are we doing monthly or seasonal memberships? Are we thinking about doing that? We should. Yeah, and again, I, I, I without winters and Scott, I mean, snowbirds. Most people so, do monthlies. I guess the question is, I assume we're doing monthlies. Um, I think seasonal memberships. We'd lean on you guys. I know, like we did in West Cassett, but like down in Booth Bay, where it's a very seasonal. They did summer, like cottage package. They called it oh, that right. sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Well, Cape yeah. Elizabeth does uh, three month membership for the pool which is nice i mean it's three yep. months where whenever you start so it's yep. not necessarily yep. seasonal, and it's a different but, rate though right? yeah. it's a higher rate than your normal monthly if you commit to 12 oh, yeah. it's 30 dollars a month if you do a three month it's 40 dollars a month yeah no what wait what a lot I of places that i'm not saying it's what? it's cheaper if it it's cheaper to do a, a three month than a one month yeah and oh, then oh but one quarter of the annual fee is going to be less than Correct. than three month fee. Right. So you can you can upscale those shorter yeah. memberships because it's not committing to a whole year of fixed revenue. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, those are choices that you know to make. I think we should factor that in because I think there are there are a lot of people that go they go south for the winter. Yeah. Right? Or, so or they come here for just for the summer. Yeah. So did you hear what they're talking about, Scott? Like being able to break this this annual membership yeah. out into I'm months so you can see here. just as a marketing thing, like, hey, you want to do this, it's forty dollars a month. Like that's less than Starbucks coffee you buy weekly, you know what I mean? If you want it. But if somebody wanted a short term, like a three month membership, like my we had a tier, like like I said, when you divide that out, ours was more expensive than taking your quarterly your annual and dividing it by four. Yeah. You know. So. That's what we that's what we typically see is that you know so it it may be three sixty uh for uh, just a simple math right so three sixty for youth that's you know thirty dollars thirty dollars a month um so the monthly rate though may be thirty five um you know as opposed to oh. to three sixty for the year so you're getting a little it's a little bit of premium and part of the reason for that is because it does take somebody to uh, set up the EFT or the credit card, and then there are inevitably going to be returns, which again is staff time to to then assess fees and do all those kind of things. So um, there, there's an easy justification for the reason why those occur. Um, and then uh, we see a number of facilities do um, there's you know summer only specials, you know for for college kids, they're home during the summer, and you know or 
they're they're certain place for you know you do a November December special and those kind of things. So um, what we mm -hmm. try to do when we build this model is look here's what we feel that the appropriate or the, the the market penetration is overall. How you massage and work all those numbers in in the grand scheme of things when it comes down to a revenue revenue wise. It, it's going to be less than a, a tenth or two tenths of a percent. It's really going to be a, a minor amount for the most part. Um, we just want to get the bulk of the memberships in there that what we feel is appropriate. And then how you massage those numbers uh, between seasonally, uh, you know, or three month memberships or, you know, monthly memberships or mo the other option that we've seen a lot of places do is punch passes. So it's kind of in between, right? And so it may not expire. So, but you get, you know, instead of you get 10 visits uh, and you pay, um, you know, 90 bucks for 10 visits. So you get a discount off the 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 rate of a daily admission, but it's more than what you pay for a month because you're not sure that you're going to go. And, but then you could use it on you and your 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 wife, let's just say. So there, there are a lot of different ways and mechanisms that, that you can utilize in order to access and utilize a facility. Um, but, you know, the two the, the two biggest ones basically are daily admissions and memberships. And, and the key, too, is in that structure is not to overthink the beginning, too, because you don't know where your sweet spots are. Or you don't know how busy you're going to be. And we would make summer specials because we are slow in the summer. So you make those rates and those cottage memberships and the punch passes. But in the winter, you could probably name your price because everybody's coming inside. And so don't undershoot the revenue or make too many choices, you can you can pick your kind of sales pitches at the appropriate time once you kind of build something out too. So that's another way for to look at it. And and the, the last item that I'll that I'll point out on that too is it, uh, you don't want to tom complicate things. Um, the more complicated your rate structure is, the more challenging it is to for your staff to explain for people to understand, and then they just get frustrated and they walk out. Um, people want to come in. I you know as an adult. How much is it for me to join for a month? You know, and then if you're like, well, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, then they're like, I, look, I just wanted to join for a month. I don't care. And so um, we, we always recommend, again, a, a simplified approach uh, to memberships. So uh, all told um, and kind of including everything there um, on the, the expense side, Staff, as I mentioned, is essentially about 67 percent, 60 to, to 70 percent, typically 65 to 70 percent uh, of your overall expenditures, commodities. That's, you know, your supplies that you're utilizing um, for for the facility. So those are going to be items like your your maintenance supplies, your janitorial rec, rec supplies, uniforms, uh, those types of things. Your contractual, again, uh, mentioned utilities, that's where that, that falls into. Um, it's also some of your contractual uh, relationships that you would have for services, um, advertising, going to conferences, your bank charges, your IT charges, um, all those types of things. So um, all told, a little over $3 million, as we mentioned, the $150,000 for that uh, sinking fund pulling out the the rent and, and expenditures that you have. So all told, then the, the ex overall expenditure is just under $3 million. And then on the revenue side, a um, million dollars worth of membership, another $200,000 worth of, um, of daily admissions. Um, you, somebody had mentioned uh, programs. So all your aquatics programs typically have fees associated with them. And so that's where that is. That's swim lessons. Um, that's water fitness. It's, um, let's see, your, your overnight, uh, or not your overnight, but your, um, some, some camps, um, dive in movies, um, all those types of things. Dry program is all your recreation programming. So anything that's going to going to occur uh, in the um, in the, any of the meeting rooms, it's your camps, uh, it's some of your group fitness classes that you as you had mentioned earlier. We we typically recommend, and most we see most facilities have a basic package of you know as Todd was mentioning earlier of of what is included in your membership, and then there's some specialty classes that have a separate fee associated with them. So 
um, all of those dry programming about 286 and then rentals uh, at 266. And so rentals of the facility, the, the bulk of the rentals uh, do come from uh, the pool itself, uh, from swim teams, both the high school as well as uh, a club team that, that would utilize the facility. Um, there's some therapy uh, time that's in there as well. Um, and then uh, the just the using of the community rooms as well as the gymnasium. And so we bake all that together uh, to come up with a, a little over uh, $2 million. So when we take a look at it uh, all together, uh, the annual subsidy uh, of about 800, just under $900,000 and a recapture rate, recovery rate of about 70%. Um, in the industry, what we see on these types of facilities is anywhere between 60 and 80% if the intent of that facility is to try to drive drive revenue. Um, we see a number of these facilities in places that, that are very low in the 30 to 40% because they just want to have a tremendous amount of participation. Um, but we also see it on the other, other side of things, whereas um, you may have a lower participation and a higher fee um, that has a higher recovery rate. So. Uh, that's kind of where this one fell based on the, the market. Like I said, kind of that a conservative approach on everything, including all of those full-time staffing positions and then that lower um, um, penetration rate. So what's your gut feeling when you see these numbers? If you're very nervous? So uh, I've gone through this once um, because I'm in the middle of budget season, so I'm spending a lot of time on that end of it right now. Um, personally, I think... I think the expenses are on the average to high in the sense of um, rates we pay, credit cards, that sort of stuff. But then also some of the how many positions are in there. I think again, how to consolidate. I mean, if you can get rid of consolidate two positions with staff, I mean, that's like a hundred and eighty thousand yeah. dollars that comes down right off the top. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think that I think on the revenue side, um, I'm not as familiar with Southern Maine mm -hmm. as I am with Mid Coast, like population. But if you're in that projection of 1,600 members or member units, right? That you said 1,000 resident and 600 non. 600 non. I think that's, and again, Scott said, I think that's conservative. Yeah. You know what I mean? Depending on what it is. Um, and, and then, um, and I appreciate this. So this is not an ox god on you or Darren. I appreciate the conservative approach because there's nothing like shooting a rocket in the sky and never be able to land it anywhere because <laughs> because it's so fake. Um, this is very conservative on that end. I think on the revenue side, we can do a lot better. Some of their projections for some of their specialty camps, $150, $170 a week. We're charging two, two fifty. Way more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that you know the, the volume of them. You know, one week, eight, like when I when I showed the um, my programmers today, um, eight weeks of summer camp and then eight weeks of specialty camp. Mm -hmm. That's only sixteen weeks, and again, they are instantly went to I can turn that into a team camp, and I can get more than seventy five kids, and I can do the specialty camp. But I also could do it. My senior program was like she's like I can do a senior camp, you know, and put more people in there and charge more money. And so I think there's a lot of room to grow. And again, when you think camp, most people think during the eight weeks during the summer. My staff thinks we've never had a building. I can run a senior fitness camp once a month oh, for yeah. three nights. Right. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So there's oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of these numbers are what you see in a typical more rec center, you know, number wise, more yeah. typical things. I think because we've lived in a world of programming and kind of living hand to mouth for space. There's a lot of things that I think we can do that will get more people in there. Um, and I think that I just think we can do more on the revenue side. And so I, I can do some digging and kind of seeing some of those gaps there. But again, I don't want to do it just to lower that number, you know, yeah. to make the red number smaller. And so I want to be cautious of what we do too. So I don't want to be the guy that says I can get that number down to 500. But that's palatable. You know what I mean? Well, we might, but Nobody can make a promise. I think the most important number, if we've got a million dollar deficit every year, which it looks like it is, close yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Um, is what does that end up um, divided by the number of households in this town? Yeah, and and what does it, <laughs> how much does it increase the household, uh, the taxes for each household? Um, because 
we're not going to get this passed. That and that number doesn't even reflect the bill. The I was going to say we don't have the capital right. costs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so let me ask you this before we go any further. Looking at that number and knowing the building, how big it is, and what those specs are, and what could be in that building, is that number like okay? You know, if that number was five hundred, do you feel better? And and again, this is for our discussion, not for the public. Right? You know, they're going to see it, but in the sense of like, what were you thinking as a number like you could feel really good about closing a gap? I was kind of hoping it would operate at closer to ninety percent. Yeah, self funded. That's kind of where I was thinking. Yeah. And maybe we can get there with with better revenues. I I think the revenues are not, yeah, as little as I know. Yeah, I, I would. They both would be improved. I would like to see. Yeah, I think expense for staffing and revenue. I think there's a massage there that. It, it, a it double, felt yeah. pretty yeah. overstaffed. Yeah, it felt facility. Yeah. The revenue cost, the staffing, seemed. And back to the original comment about not being exorbitant, it felt pretty exorbitant. So I or or grandiose. So I think we need to be pretty serious about what staffing would allow us to have best in class yeah. presentation and and revenue producing opportunities, yeah. but not be over the top. Um, but the revenue, I just just looking at those monthly fees, and especially for non-residents, the beach is the perfect example of what yeah. people are willing to pay for this. Um, yeah, they're paying one hundred fifty dollars for three months. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, I feel like realistically, we could get pretty darn close to yeah, And I was, and yeah. when I was thinking that number, because I think that's yeah, close yeah, to what we talked. We talked eighty-five to ninety. Yeah. Right? So I wasn't including any capital either number yeah. in there too. So that's right. I don't know. That's got to be three percent right there. Three percent yeah. right there. And then three percent for credit cards is another yeah. sixty. So, so Scott, with that this discussion being had. What's the next step for us and for me that I can help? You know, again, I appreciate the conservative approach. That was what we want. We didn't want you coming in and overshooting the world. And then we're like, hey, <laughs> right, um, right. But um, I don't mind with this group and then my staff taking a crack at some of these numbers and giving you places that I think that I can massage in, for example. Sports coordinator and, and fitness coordinator. That could be one chip. There's one position gone. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's both and I share those duties. You know what I mean? Um, and then some of the look at some of the revenue gaps, do some of the comparison. Again, I think um question of Darren would be is where did he get that number for those yep. rates and how compare how uh, competitive we are? And yep. then uh that sort of stuff. So I think that um oh I'm hearing your voice, but your screen's frozen, so that was freaking me out for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my camera, so sorry. We're all good. Okay, um, but I'll kind of, I'll kind of get some of those pinch points, and we can gather some suggestions from this group of areas to kind of look at. But again, I think the membership number we could look at. Um, I think I'd be comfortable with the percentage of, you know, going to twelve percent penetration rate versus ten percent, because mm -hmm. I think though, I think that again, there are people. Well, right now with swimmers that go to all these other oh, places yeah. around us. 10% so low. You know what I mean? So uh, and and Scarborough is getting high participation rate in everything we do. It's just, it's, it's people, that's just the way it is. Every sports, every fitness, I mean, and so I think that, I think we could go more towards that Midland and safe, go another 2% there, um, go to 12% for penetration rate. I could look at some of those based on what my staff and some of the things I'm proposing for this budget. You know, we might be able to reduce one or two positions in that full time structure. Um, and then look at some revenue potentials on programs that I could give it to my staff where we can say, hey guys, you know, if we had this space based on what we see here, mm -hmm. what would you do? And give them a week to come back with something to kind of. You know things we know we could deliver day one, not take six months to build. But right. you know, right. and that's the nice thing about when you build a building. It's like you know, hey, this is going to open July first, two thousand twenty-seven. You got two years to build all this out. You know, it's not like today. I need it tomorrow. Yeah. So, and the facility fees too looked off to me. As far as whether which one of those? Well, specifically the fifty dollars an hour for the basketball court. I mean, anytime you. Playing in basketball, you're going to have a lot of people sharing that court space. Fifty dollars an hour doesn't sound. Yeah, it's probably it not. Sounds too far. It's probably not too far off. And again, 
I think it depends on frequency. And again, we've we've looked at, you know, in my old place, we had contracts with certain groups. And, and again, that's why I like that Saturday morning. Hey, A and you, yeah. yeah, you want the gym every day? Well, I can give it to you Sundays at eight o'clock. Cause I just need one custodian to come open the building. Now I have a set contract for you to come in and use the gym or, mm -hmm. you know, a, a water polo team coming in or something that's outside of our scope that eats up a lot of facility hours. Um, so um, can we get um, any costs for the like South Portland and Cape? Those are the two um, closest centers yep. that we're going to be in competition with. Um, and quite frankly, I think, um, you know, there's some people in that are on the border of those towns that are still going to go to those pools. But where we're going to probably, I'm assuming, we'll have something closer to the um, the interstate. We're going to probably get a lot of people who are going to stop after work from other communities. Well, if you can hop on the highway by. and get 20, I mean, shoot, from Pine Point, some days takes you 20 minutes yeah. to get to Sunday town. Yeah. If I I can be here from Freeport in 20 minutes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. So in that scope of depending on what the building is, the hard thing right now is that trying to be conservative and thoughtful with our decisions and um being able to again under promise and over deliver on the back end, mm -hmm. what that sweet spot is. But I, I think our range is going to be bigger than a normal because you go west of us, there's not a lot of pools. You know, right. In 20 minutes. West gets you to a lot of small towns where if yeah. they hit a Gorham corridor or they hit, you know, you get on that highway, you can be to Gorham alone would right. would want to right. use this pool. Right. And again, we so pool, pool USM, is it? Is uh, pool USM? USM? I don't know. I don't think there's I don't know, but even if it is, I know track scheduling track my brother's track yeah. coach yeah. for yeah. Gorham. Yeah. Yeah. They're in there at six in the morning yeah. practicing. And yeah. yeah, because of the college gets first dibs yeah. on everything there, which is the way it should be. And again, when you own a facility, everybody's right. going to shop it. You know what I mean? And again, right. the goal in my right. mind is always Scarborough first, build the gaps that make sense, yeah. and then tweak once you see where Scarborough lands, you know, and so that type of model. Um, and Westbrook, you've got a lot of people on yeah. my oh, side of West, you know, Westbrook, a lot of the Portland pools. I mean, people in Cape, you know, they go to all those pools because there's not one. Right. You know right. What I mean, I, I don't think we'll have any trouble filling it. I think we should be aggressive on the yep. um, revenue side. I think we want to give ourselves some, you know, I don't know, leeway for failure in certain areas. But yep. I, I think this might be a little too conservative yep. for this stage of where we're at. And I would also want to make sure that we're if we're going to be a little more aggressive with revenue that it's in a non-revenue category. I mean, non-resident categories too, because again, yeah. that whole political vote of, oh man, that's just what's outside that comfort zone. Right. You know what I mean? Of mm -hmm. like, you know, what's, oh, what would we have for a non-resident membership? Um, no, I'm sorry for a resident family. Oh. But when you take that number and you right. divide seven, seven twenty yeah. and divide oh, that resident. by twelve. Yeah. Well, the uh, family membership at Cape was 1,136, substantially higher. And and that's just a fitness room and a pool. Right. So that's no gym, no walking track. That's no, you know what I mean? So again, it's yeah. that sales pitch, right? Absolutely. You don't want to be too too low because then you're going to be overpopulated and overcrowded. And you don't want to be too under because you want to make sure your residents get right. the sweet spot. Yeah. But being a great value is a big deal for a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why. Hundred, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I think we can. I think we can massage those and get that back to Darren and Keith, and and kind of look at that and close that gap. I think we can get to to high eighties really. Not too. To hard. me, to me, a big selling point from a, from the political point of view is as much of your revenue, you know, your operating expenses, whatever you can cover with revenue, is is fabulous. Yeah. But as you know, your the, your biggest obstacle is building a building. Where's it right. going to go? Yeah. 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 Where are you getting the land? Yeah. You know, and all of that. And that's that right there is huge right, right now. And that's why strategically and systematically is that yeah. we're being very thoughtful and deliberate with what does the building look like? Right. Expense and revenue. Right. Because if you can come to a happy medium there and understand that, yeah. and people can understand what they're getting, and then the value, 
it's a lot easier to sit down right. and comprehend, okay, I may be $1,200 a month annual, and $1,200 a year, and it's $100 a month for a family of six people to go, and my taxes may go up $100. So is, you know, is $1,300 a year worth this to me? Right. Me? A absolutely. Somebody, maybe not, but right. that's why we're trying not to throw the build cost into this mix until we understand right. all the details of what makes a building run because you don't want to build something that can't function. And that's the that's the risk of building something to say. That's when they say want to put a pool on the school. I'm saying it out loud right now. Oh, I'm, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing it's, that. I, I I know, but it's not a revenue gain. It's it's a it's a it's a cost. It's right. A, it's a huge when you talk just about a lap pool on a school, yes, lap swimmers will swim. But there's not a lot of time right. outside of that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just not. And so thinking community-wise, <laughs> that's not, and that's why this has to be a good value, right? It just has to make sense for most people. And this building, you know, would have to have a strong nonprofit arm, fundraising, donations, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of, you know, Go that was. All that sort of stuff. Yeah, you know, you're talking about the long hair naming. Yeah. Uh, you know, naming rights. Yeah, what about the naming rights? Huh? Yeah. Uh, well, Scott, what? we haven't really touched on that. Can you hear us, Scott? I, I can't. Sorry. Zoom kicked me out for a second or a minute there. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, you know, again, we're we're gonna kind of massage some things on this end. I think we agree that I'll get yep. back to you guys and I'll sh I'll I'll share with this committee before I get it to you guys. And then let you tell us the pros and cons to it to see yep. if it meets the model. Um, but again, this is going down a different rabbit hole. But when we're talking about our build and the cost of build, once we get to that discussion, naming rights and longevity yep. stuff into a building, like when we get to that point, how do we have that discussion and how do yep. we start leaning into that? You know. Sure. That, 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 again, it's a it's a great discussion when you start getting to capital. You know how to tackle the the capital mm -hmm. cost of of a facility, and so a number of facilities uh, go about it differently. Um, again, uh, somebody mentioned you know the question about uh, scholarships, and so how do you fund scholarships? And so um, we've seen communities uh, do it uh, so that the 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 different areas of the facility are named. So a gymnasium, meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. fitness room, uh -huh. those types of things. Typically, we, what we always do is we always recommend that there's a time frame associated with it. So just yeah. because you name it, um, it, your name is not staying there forever. There's a five, 10 year uh, uh, cost. Oh, don't, put the, don't put the name in granite marble on the front of the building. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and then, that's and then five. Found dumbbell. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's his own dumbbell. Right? Yeah. Secure by the fitness yeah. center. So yeah, uh, I think we'll kind of lean on that and get to the capital piece. Because yep. I think those are, I think based on what we've seen here, and this is just me speaking, um, what I've seen here and the operation, the revenue, we've been really conservative. I think we can tweak that to get to more of a palatable mm -hmm. number that's easily defendable mm -hmm. based on the market. I think that when we get to the capital number and then Keith and um, right, you guys start getting us that piece to discuss. I want to be fully ready before we put that number out there, kind of like we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We're very thoughtful, and here's some of the things we're going to do to offset that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, not just tell them the number per square foot or not put it out there that, right. hey, this is a 50 million, whatever the number is. Here's how we think we can go after getting that number down. Right. You know what I mean? And again, Jean Marie said it. We have some other tools at our disposal. Depending on where it's built, is it close to a TIF district? We can recover 60% mm -hmm. of the dollars that we're not getting right now. You turn a $50 million building into 30 really quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Depending on where it is, if you choose to use some of those resources. And so that's what's exciting. But that's why we've been kind of holding the capital piece off to the side because mm -hmm. that's what scared the school. That's what scared the library. We have this advantage yeah. of offset to, right. to do hey, this is why we made these decisions. This is why that choice is there. You know, again, we talked about that sliding thing and if we get to that point, Scott, but like, hey, if we get to the capital cost and, um, you know, you're going to talk about going to two gym and we said, well, you know, we know, you know we need two, right? Yeah. But we're doing three, you know, 
A set, taking a third gym away may help the cost, pool, but it really may hit the, the revenue right. side of things harder right. than any other thing. And so that's what their professionals will be able to tell us um, right. as far as build outs. You know what it, I mean? Exactly. And so where's those sweet spots we get to that? Yeah, so exactly on on the on the gym side of things, um, you know, two is is like you said is is a minimum. Um, if you're looking to maximize revenue, you really do need to have that third gym for, from two different perspectives. One is tournaments. Um, in order to have a facility that can host uh, tournaments that are going to draw folks in, um, which again you don't get, you, you know, you're not benefit, you are benefiting directly, but the the, the town is benefiting indirectly from tax revenue uh, that's associated mm -hmm. with that. Um, but in order to really get tournament directors want to have as many courts under one roof as possible because it limits their operational expenditures mm -hmm. uh, for their tournaments themselves. The other item is that when it comes down to renting of facilities, let's say somebody wants to practice on a court, if if their practice, if their team is practicing on a court or on a half court or whatever, then now you only have one gym or do you, you, um, so it limits mm -hmm. your revenue opportunities, you know, if they, because you want to typically with these types of facilities, they're, you know, uh, somebody's paying a, a general membership, right? And so if I want to go down there and I want to shoot hoops with my son, daughter, whatever, you should in general, for the most part, um, be able to do so because you're, that's part of your membership. Um, and so that's the ben true benefit of having a third gym is you can still allow drop in play, you can allow rentals, um, and you can still have even recreational play leagues, those kind of things going on at the same time, as well as maximizing tournament revenue. Yeah, I mean, just think about on a yeah. Tuesday night at five o'clock, right? Yeah. So that you still potentially have some team programming going on. That's an untapped market for Scarborough that we didn't really get oh, a lot of, you know, you got one court that's just team members drop in, right? They're going crazy in there. You got one that's set up for a rental potential, you know, whatever that is. And then you're running another one that's got class. You may have a pickleball league right. or you may have, you know, an aerobics class going. And the biggest challenge for a lot of facilities is like, hey, we do this. And then you dig into it. You do that one hour a week. Don't tell me you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, we'll play pickleball right. one hour a week. That's not having pickleball. That's, you know, right. and so when you start tweaking that, you know, you got to make sure that you can, if you're going to gather these people, it's consistent. it's consistent and they have time. It's not always like I'm shutting the pool down because the high school's in there or I'm shutting the pool down because I need a swim lesson because it makes more revenue. I paid my membership because I just want to lap swim. <clears throat> right. And you're telling me I can only do it here, here and here. All the sweet spots are eaten up by other things. And so right. yeah. that's why space and size and Mm -hmm. volume is really important and that's why you keep people right yeah the best facility we go to are they mm -hmm. have amenities and they're service-based they're not mm -hmm. people go to things now because they have to because there's no game in town i gotta go to somewhere else mm -hmm. i have to go to you know um so i think there's a lot of upside here so. yeah i mean i'm not gonna have a membership if i can only go do something at this time and that time, right? I mean, like, well, okay, it's dirt cheap for me, but I, I, yep. I can't use it during that. You know, right. Right. it Absolutely. just becomes unusable. You right. want to make sure when you look at a schedule, like, yeah. okay, walking in the track. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you may have the track from three to five available for a, a team. You know what I mean? But all day you can walk, all night you can walk, or there's a basketball group that there's at least always a half open for somebody just to pop in, yeah. shoot free throws. You know what I mean? Or, or you're having a lunch league going on, but there's always another court to do something else. Are we going to have some outdoor things for around this facility too? So that that we've left off the program for now. And I think yeah. that was with keys because I think it depends on what site, how much space. Yeah, you exactly. You can build out there. And I think Keith had some great examples when, again, talking about um, uh, the cafe or right. having a community garden on site right. where you can come inside and have classes, but you walk right outside or there's... You know, bocce courts. We can come in and get or a couple of people. Or meet, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends yeah. on how many acres yeah. and what that yeah. looks okay. like. And we have those things already identified in the master right. plan that we have to right yeah. hit some of those benchmarks. So I think if it fits in here, it's an easy justification. Um, but everything right now they're talking about is inside the walls in that, yeah. that yeah. minimum footprint for us. So. Hmm. So I, I think the, the the two other things that I just wanted to touch on real quick, just kind of talking about program and how they impact operations. One is the swimming pool. And I, I think um, I heard a little bit of discussion about, 
you know, the just a standalone indoor pool on school location or something like that. Really, the, you know, these types of facilities are driven by the leisure component, the recreational pool. Um, and so really that needs to be emphasized. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's a, in some ways aquatics is a lost leader. But if you have a, a, a rectangular flat pool, um, you will not have met family memberships in general. I and mean, it's it is just not going to happen because people want to have the they want to swim, but they want to do it um, in zero depth and slides and they want a little bit of water attainment, if you will, in general. Um, you know, adult membership and senior membership are, are fine for for lap pools, but when it comes to family memberships, they can they will be driven by pools. Um, sure. And then the the last thing that I'll I'll say is again, you talked about you know trying to maximize uh, membership. The other consideration would be to to grow the fitness space, um, whether it's the studio space or the cardio and weights. Um, you know, again, that's that's your that's your big driver is your membership. And the, the, you know, 60% uh, of your members typically are using the fitness area. Um, so those spaces oh. um, are, are the ones that people are seeking in the walking track. Uh, those are, that's where the, the bulk of your usage comes from. Um, and so just, again, those will drive your revenue number, your membership numbers and significant revenue. Scott, with well, that said, and uh, thank you for bringing that up. You know, if our membership was the 1600 that you project in our existing format, <laughs> is the 2500 square feet. Again, I don't know if you're part of the discussion, but we're trying not to compete with our public competitors, our private competitors. Right. We're trying to make sure there's value and entry right. level. But based on 1600 members, which I think is conservative, that penetration rate, let's say it goes up to 18 or 1900, um, is 2500 square feet of fitness space. Ratio wise, if you're saying 60% of your membership, you know what I mean? If there's, you know, that's 700 people, like 800 people that could be yeah. using that fishing screen. Because again, there's nothing worse when we went to a local uh, here in Wiscasset. Boom. Uh, it was like, it was gross. You're just so I, close. I to went to work out we left the other night and I couldn't get on a chest press and I walked out of it because the guy next to me was sweating on my own lawn. I'm just going to take the dog and I'm going to go for a walk. I'll come back at another time. It was, it was, it was too much. Mm -hmm. And so, like, are we in that? Are we undershooting ourselves there that we're creating a problem? Or we're, we're, give us some guidance there. Yeah. So, so what I would say is uh, just from my experience. So, the, I mentioned earlier that the facility that I had that was 63,000 square feet, it was in a town of 20,000. So, similar population size. Um, and we had a 4,000, excuse me, 4,000 square feet of fitness space. So, uh, <laughs> and, and we had 2,000, we had 2,000 members. How, how did you feel about, how was it, you know what I mean? Did you, well, two questions. One is, how did that feel with that amount of memberships? And then two, we literally have 10 fitness studios in town. Yeah. I mean, it's a total uh, different. It is so, I'm just different. trying to reflect some of the comments we've yep. heard about. It, it, it's it's not a, who wants to go to Foley's isn't going to drop the membership to have a right. membership here. I really don't think so. Yeah. So, and, and trying to keep the cost down, the whole proposal, I just don't think it's worth it to to add costs for 1,500 more square feet when we do have a lot of other um, uh, places that offer fitness in town. So, but, and when you but, say fitness, you're talking about weights, weights pretty much. Yeah, weights and cardio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We went to bath and weights and cardio. Weights but, and cardio is in right, some side effects. Right. Kind of circuit machines. Because I know I'm I'm a Medicare Advantage and I can go to Planet Fitness for yeah. nothing. Right. But let's, 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 start, let's let Scott answer the know, question. Yeah. What are seniors? <laughs> sure. So um, that that was a concern in where I was as far as com competing against uh, private private pra private uh, providers. Um, and what we found is their membership actually, once our facility opened, their membership stayed the same. It actually increased a little bit because people were looking for a different experience. Um, uh, so that's 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 what we found there. And we've, we've seen that number of different places as, as well, um, because they somebody mentioned they're, they're just they're different. Um, you're, you're, they're looking for for something different in that regard. Um, and as far as, you know. What I would have said is we limited it to four thousand again in, in kind of 
um, as as a way of trying to appease that that uh, those other facilities and those kind of things. We would prefer to have a, a larger space. It it worked the majority of the time, but between you know five o'clock and six thirty in January and February. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> it was it was a, a little uh, it it was busy. It was very busy. You you could always find something, but you know instead mm -hmm. of wanting to be on the treadmill on the end, you may have to be on the third one and in those kind of things. So it never oh, was yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. But uh, but it was busy. I mean, we may have people that get memberships because bullies doesn't have the ability to have your kid in the pool and right, right. Well, that's what I would yeah, yeah. So, like, like the Karen Shoops, they yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not built to go into a gym like that right. mentally. I just, she doesn't right. want to be there. It's too too right. too much, you know. Right. I guess this question is for Keith and the design side of things because we were again we did our tours. We talked about different user spaces. You saw, you know. Um, some tracks had bigger corner space, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of making the wall right up against the third lane, they made it, you know, it was bigger. So then when you got to the corner, there was like a six by six corner where they had a piece of fitness equipment and you could walk to the track oh, right, and do different right. things. Yeah. Um, I've seen centers where um, they, uh, hey, Dan. Um, they, sorry, I want to know what I'm saying. Um, uh, they put in like a second or a third fitness studio because like we, we love the model right tell me if I'm wrong but we love the bath model fitness room you could see both sides of the building well the challenge with that that's in the heart of the building you just don't expand off the heart of your building yeah. and so you have to be a little foresight where you know I showed you in Wiscasset we took away the hallway and made that space bigger imagine if they have a hallway to yeah. have what we had and so I've seen places it's cheaper to add a second aerobics room little more revenue right. but you can also blow the wall out take away an aerobics room to expand for a fitness center so how do we kind of to gwen's point a couple meetings ago how do we have square footage that's priority revenue building that we could change down the road if we needed to you know what i mean where yeah. we want to blow on a wall for a fitness studio and make it more cardio versus you know you make those choices at the time or is it you know, where's that sweet spot with Scott to say, okay, hey, you know, if you went to 3,500 square feet, it's going to cost you this, but the potential is to make everybody happy and you keep people, you know, where's where's that value, I guess? And then that comes into your design play yeah, on yeah. how the spaces lay out. Is that wall always temporary? Is it just something that you have planned in there? It's just, oh, yeah, maybe it's an accordion wall. Maybe well, that's what I was just yeah, thinking yeah. one that you can pull out or, yeah, because again, there's like centers that I've one. seen that, you know, the, <laughs> The fitness center goes to garage doors and they go up and you can actually go stretch in the studio yeah. versus having a wall. So right. yeah, your thoughts, <laughs> Keith, on how do we have some flexible space yeah. there to grow and not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, there's some interesting ideas about that. I mean, you know, I think, you know, try to utilize some of those interstitial spaces. Like if you look at the track, not being necessarily an oval, if it kind of wends its way around, you know, like some people like being out in the middle where everyone's working out, right? A big fitness center, but there's also a model where, you know, if you've got that like six foot margin where there's like a kind of like a little bit of an eddy that the track is moving by and you get a couple of cardio machines there, you know, some people want to be tucked away. And so like, you know, providing a bunch of opportunities to kind of program spaces that seem like they, you know, are, are, are gen they seem left over because they're generated by a different way of arranging the spaces. So you make great opportunity there to, to make it a little more of a dynamic space um, and, and more interesting for people, you know, walking on the track, et cetera. So it's like, once we start getting into the, into the options for floor plan, looking at, 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 you know, is there a way where we could have a model that's maybe a little more thoroughly programmed versus something that's got, everything's got like a really rigid, you know, wall-based approach. Yeah. And I like Alex's comment about that, you know, more flexible wall, whatever that is, mm -hmm. riding, garage, whatever it is that, mm -hmm. again, you may not have a fitness class going, all day long and that door may be open six out of 12 hours the building's open right you know what i mean it's just a place to go stretch or grab a fitness ball right. or you know do trx or, free, or something or you know what I mean? yeah. yeah you know some so that sort of stuff so i think there's ways to make that space maybe feel better knowing we've got that kind of so i think that's a design consideration we get to that i think it's important to keep scott's primary comment in in memory though that he thinks that for the facility that we're talking about with the membership numbers that we are talking about mm -hmm. he feels that that 2500 and that was the it's one number of all of these numbers that he's zeroed on to say yeah. that's something you guys might want to think about 
So we can't lose sight of that comment, I don't think, no matter what we do in terms of our place. Or what. And the kids are not coming here for after school care, you think? That's going to stay? No. So again, a, a market that's not really built into their thing yeah. is, is the team program. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, where we don't do team program right now because we, we're not getting into schools and we're not having that space where, you know, having that space where it's whether it's a program in one of the meeting spaces or it's actual giving them a gymnasium right. or giving them a, a you know a, a, a rec room or a game or whatever just to shoot that that's yeah. an untapped market for Scarborough right now um, and there's a lot of kids that, yes Scarborough's got a high percentage rate but there's still a lot of kids um, that don't participate in high school mm -hmm. basketball mm -hmm. you know and then they oh, right. something oh, else absolutely. Like, what are they doing yeah. you know we're Kramer right now just planned and is working with a senior at the school. He's doing a three-week pickleball league yeah. for kids. It's like five bucks to hop in, and he's gonna he's got the gym between basketball and softball, baseball season. He's got the gym for three weeks. It's gonna be five. What days season week. sports? Yep. But again, that's an untapped thing, and that. Right. But we've got three multi-purpose rooms, each of a thousand square feet, and a multi-generational game room of fifteen hundred square feet. Yep. We've got plenty of room for that. This kind no, of. No, we're talking about the the. The cardio and free weights. Yeah, so, so that, Scott, that's not that's it's movable equipment, but it's not movable like day to day. Yeah, like that may be yeah. on the first floor, and this yeah. may be on the other side of the building. So you're yeah. not going to grab your weights and walk down the hall. Right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, so if we about, back them up, if we can put them in closer can proximity, yeah. right. right. Okay. Then you get some more flexibility that way. Right. But I think you know. But you're going to have to have the right floor and. Or weights. I mean, we can't. Yeah, oh, yeah. what you're expecting to yeah. do. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And then, so, Scott, what would you, in a perfect scenario, suggest instead of 2,500? Um, I, you know, I would probably be in close to that that 4,000 uh, 4, range. Yeah, and and, and I, you know, it it doesn't have to be specifically in one area it, you know as kind of keith mentioned you know it, it, as a track meanders you know you can create and or in corners you can you can create some additional spaces um the the main thing is uh that you know the, the, and the nice thing that you guys have is you know keith we're on the front end of it right rather than trying to create those spaces <laughs> later on um it, it, mm -hmm. acknowledging that that those are an opportunity uh to find things so, so are you saying that's you, you had four thousand for like the cardio and free weights, you know, not including the fitness studio spaces or with that included? Yeah, not including. Not including. Not yeah. including. Yeah. So that twenty-five would go to four. And I guess the question where and we kind of we've been well, I've been kind of preaching this from the piece where if when we get down to a point where we gotta make that we're get, trying to get closer to 90, you know, does that help us get there? But what does it do to the build cost, Keith, when we get there? And I would wrap, and I'll, I'll lean on you guys when we get to that point. But if it's getting another fifteen hundred square feet on cardio, I mean on a fitness studio that has a high revenue gain potential, mm -hmm. and shortening a meeting room to two thousand square feet, you know what I mean? Like where where do you yeah. manipulate the building, and where does that build cost start to produce or you know the best, if you will? Yeah. Yeah, we need to be careful here. We keep we keep adding things, and if we're gonna have a wish list, yeah, I really, I really, really want to see the um, cost estimates for the have to right. things, yeah. and then the wish list in comparison, because we may not be able to have the wish list. Um, we just may not be able to get that passed. I'm, I'm confident we won't get um a huge building pass that is mm -hmm. more than what a lot of people think we need i mean there are a large number of people in this community who think all we need is a pool right and and we we really need to be careful and and yeah we can earn more money but we're still only at 90 percent. if we were at 100 or 110 percent where we're where a larger space gives us an opportunity to make more than than our expenses, and that can go toward the cost of a bigger building. That's one thing, but at, at ninety percent, we're never going to be there. So everything that we add is just adding cost and not helping right. the taxpayer. Right. Where's that situation. value? Right. Get it. Okay. Um, I 
Anything else from Scott or Keith to go over today? Good there? Okay. What do they need from, and that's my big question in my head right now. Like, well, what do they need from us to be able to, for me to get some work to get back to you guys and say, does yeah. this reflect what we talked about? You know what I mean? And is there anything that we can do to help to get, like, I've got cost estimates from pay yeah. on membership costs yeah. and everything. What's next for us, Scott and Keith? Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's just getting back that, that feedback from you guys on these operational items and issues and, and those kind of things that we discussed. And, um, you know, then we can, we can, you know, I, I don't know that we need to, to truly um, come back with a, another model until we get closer with the concept. True. You know, once you start laying things out, I think the, it kind of comes in tandem with as, as Keith and them work through their processes of laying out what the facility looks like. I think it, you could do, you know, that's where it becomes, you know, kind of the discussion you guys had right there at the end of, all right, if you, you know, reduce a meeting room versus a, you know, increase the, you know, the, the fitness floor, um, those types of things. I think that's kind of, because that that does have an impact uh, on it. So I think right now it's just getting feedback on this initially and then working through the process of what that uh, facility program final, you know, finalizing that. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, apart from the, um, that one program size, you know, everything based off, you know, one of the next things we were going to do is start looking at some kind of prototypical uh, layouts, like a sightless layout at a couple of different models, like a one story or two story. And that will just kind of, uh, prime us for looking at it if uh, if and when there's kind of sites available to test fit it on. Um, so is there, will you come back to us when you start talking about prototypical design one, two, one and a half or whatever? Um, obviously one is more cost effective enough than others depending on your site. Is there like a sweet spot, you know what I mean? As far as building design, Um, I mean, the, the site improvement costs versus, you know, building up with an elevator. I, I mean, I don't get the sense that one is like a far away winner. Uh, and, and it's just good to depend so much on, on the site. Um, I think how, how things lay out, there's obviously some, like some efficiency, uh, when mm -hmm. you're looking at, um, you know, the, you the, have the flat, perfect five acres. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's somewhere in my time. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Jim, I feel like we didn't involve you in the discussion as much as we should have here. Do you, do you want to chime in with anything or did you have some thoughts to share? Well, no, I'm, I've been, uh, I've been listening. I've been taking notes. Uh, I, I did have a couple of, a couple of questions, though that, uh, uh, and I and I'm probably jumping ahead. I, my my background is going to be more on the the building itself rather than mm -hmm. the programs, uh, mm -hmm. so that I'm kind of reserving for that. But one question that I did have when when I was on the uh, the committee for the new um, uh, elementary school. Uh, we put in a ground source heat pump system for heating and cooling. Uh, and that's been in operation now for a few years. And Todd, I was wondering if this, if somebody at the school department could give you some kind of a sense of how uh, effective that was. Uh, we looked, obviously, there's higher capital costs associated with initial, but the, uh, the trade-off is in the energy and where this facility is going to have a pretty high energy demand. Uh, I think mm -hmm. for the for the little for the school that we looked at, uh, we were looking at about a seven year payback on that, and then from then on out, uh, uh, yep. the idea. So that was at that Wentworth. The, yeah, Wentworth. Yeah. Wentworth. Yeah. yeah. So I yes. can reach out to Todd Jepson. We have a good relationship, and on the last school bill that got shot down, excuse me, they had a very and I'll get some digging and maybe we can get somebody to come talk to us. But they had a very high powered subcommittee that did all the analysis on the whole heating cooling system. 
Um, and so we could reach back to just to, to Scott and to Keith to get some kind of, um, you know, data points for them to kind of look at or be able for us to kind of look. But um, their biggest challenge was, again, the cost because they were trying to get the building. They were doing that as the building was being built in design and trying to get it voted on yeah. um, in a short window. The nice thing that yeah. we may be able to have is that if we find something like you're saying, if we did this sort of system and it's an extra $200,000 bill, but we know it's an eight year payback, right? there might be some other opportunities we look at to say, hey, you know, um, solar, on solar or grants or other things that, you know, oh, yeah. again, pretty high power sustainability committee in town. Like we have a little window to say, hey guys, this is important to us. Tell me where I get some funds. Right. Uh, tell me the latest and greatest. You know, the thing we got to be careful of is it's how far does that reach? You know, and next thing you know, we're talking about solar hand dryers and then it's wiring and it's a five thousand dollar unit. I mean, yeah. just, I, mean, no, no, I, I just I just thought there's an opportunity to at least test that and see how effective it, it has been at Wentworth. Um uh, yeah. because it has been a few years. Uh, yeah, the other thing, yeah. and I'm sure that everybody else on the committee, but I, I got an email from a Helen. Yeah, uh, we all got it, and, yeah. And the question that I had is, do we as a committee or individually, do we respond to these things? Uh, I even responded. way of thanking them for <laughs> their input, or uh, I, I just didn't, I just, there were some yeah. questions. Uh, her, what got from me was that she didn't, uh where was it uh she wanted to stay away from grandiose schemes or something like that and i um <laughs> I, I think that is going to be a very important thing uh yep. eventually yes. down the road that somebody's going to have to address and, I, and I didn't know whether we could uh, yes. find out i, I would like to find too. out from her what what is it she means by you know what would be what would constitute grandiose uh she was a pool supporter which that's one mm -hmm. thing but then we also are dealing with uh gymnasium supporters and fitness supporters and teen supporters and so that what may be grandiose to one group is is just going to be acceptable to another group and and right. I, so i i didn't i i guess that the question was will do you respond to these uh, so Jim, thanks for bringing that up. But we did talk about it. Uh, uh, I, I actually wasn't sure if that went just to me as chair or if it went to. She had know, two separate emails. She sent one to this committee, and then she sent a separate one to the town council that had a bit different angle to it. Okay. So I responded. To so it. I think what we've talked about is as a no individual committee member should respond. We will talk about it as a group, and then. I will retire. Right. I will yep. respond uh, is, on behalf is, of the committee. Is that a rule, or is right. that, or we, or can we talk about that? Because I do think people do expect to get a response right away. I think maybe if I, I responded to, or just to say thank you for your input, right. because we fine. want totally people to, yep. to totally give fine. input to us. Yep. Um, if we can not speak for the committee, that's one thing. But I think we do need to feel comfortable sending a thank you for oh, your. Oh yeah, input. I think that can be, and I'm yeah. not sure if you will. I have an auto. Yeah. We, might, we can ask yeah. IT to set an auto. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. That's what submitting I've it. Our committee will review this and get back to you with the information. Like we can put an auto filler, right? If that's because again, I think somebody would want to be. Yeah, responding. yeah, we want to oh, encourage yeah. that input for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, because I think that was one of the criticism for the school was that that people didn't feel that their input was right valued yeah. or. Uh, so, so I, I, I think it's just an opportunity to at least IT encourage. To auto. Yeah. And then you guys can decide as a group, how do you want to respond? Right. Um, right. But I think what Jim just said is a perfectly appropriate response, you know, about the, what one person would be, I of the beholder mm -hmm. explanation. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and then if there's yeah. questions we want feedback, because again, there's a certain population that think spending a dollar is grandiose. Oh, yeah. On a community center too. So, I think grandiose is going to be de um, defined by how much their taxes go up. Uh, right. Yep. And the, and with reval this year, <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Oh boy, yep. So, so uh, we don't have any members of the public. I don't think online or no. Anything. Let me just check to make sure I get the last comment. It's just died. 
Um, we are scheduled to meet again in just over two weeks because this meeting was pushed back a week. Um, this was the end. This 29. was one of the two abnormal meeting days on a Monday. We yep. have one other one in May that's going to be on a Monday. All the rest of them are going to be on Thursdays. So we got the 29th one. Thursday the 29th. Hold on. Thursday the 29th. Thursday the 29th. Yeah. Yep. And I'll um, probably be attending. And I expect all of you to be in your most wonderful leap year attitude moments. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Um, what a nice Sadie thing. Harkins. And then the one after that is just for planning purposes is Thursday, March 21st. And both your chair and your vice chair will be in Florida together. <laughs> travel the same <laughs> we would both be away. Okay. So um, I'll be zooming into that. And I hope I don't have a baseball game that night. Uh, I don't know if I do or not. But I will not be zooming. You will not be zooming into that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to, so um, just for that being, everybody please double check your calendars for that night, because if we have a, no, if we have to have a form yeah. for any sort of vote, we want to make sure that we have that. So what's the date the again? 29th. 20, 20, 20, 20, March 21st. March 21st. March 21st. March 21st. Yeah, so if there's a conflict, okay. and again, I'll, we can double, Dennis is going to watch this after the fact. We can double check with him, um, because he's the only other person. So... Um, and there's nothing in between those two? No, no. So we're going every three weeks, but we're an off cycle because we pushed off yep. the week. Yep. The one date, though, too, and I don't know if I told this, Keith, uh, Karen Shoup um, is the finance committee in town when you're getting into budget season. They sent April 11th and 12th, Thursday, Friday, as budget days for the town. And so, Ladies. Keith, we had that 11th, I think, as our public meeting. So based on once we get kind of finalize the schedule once we kind of see where you guys land now that we're a week back looking at another date to put out there because i want to put it out to the public like the dates right there? Yeah. sooner than later so nobody's like you know start advertising the heck out of that meeting you know well that's got to be a week later or whoever keith you think that fits into the schedule but some dates that patrick can bet with this group yeah, yeah, uh, agreed. Actually, Brett can't make it that date, and that's important uh -huh. for him too. So, um, okay, yeah. Let's so, just if you, can, so if you look at the timeline and throw throw Patrick and I an email on some dates that worked, and he can vet that. We can vet that through this committee to set that public meeting because we want to make sure we can reserve a space, and because it's got to be big enough to, to to hopefully host 100 people or so. And we only meet twice between now and then, so I want to know what the heck we're going to present and yeah so did you hear that question we're going to be out at that time so thoughts yeah so we were looking at, at kind of having having three stations that have been a kind of program uh really delving into the program with the cost impacts and the membership info um so that was kind of those kind of like you know one station that's kind of the the operational analysis you know what we've been talking about now but kind of fine tuned and and made a little more approachable and then it, you know we were, we were hoping to do some site scoring and talk about here is where we're considering uh and the pros and cons to get uh, public feedback on on those locations and then you know a kind of a more touchy feely like look and feel uh station where you know we we solicited for some feedback about you know what the kind of nature of the uh of the spaces uh, and the building itself would be like so people can start visualizing what they look like and kind of what the program looks like is that the april 11th that's yeah. april 11th it's scribbled in my i had one of these so little be, fashion planners like me too. Know, what be, if you were <laughs> there'd that. be a, a person a, one of the professionals who would be manning each of those stations and kind of facilitating a discussion and then we would rotate twice to get to everybody to be able to go to each of the stations kind of a thing yeah i, I think so you know I, I think we need to drill down a little bit on what it looks like but yeah we, we would probably have darren come in from out of town brett, brett would be there i would be there exactly and and we would figure out whether it's you know over the course of like a saturday morning or uh or something like that you know um or alongside another event you know we kind of missed an opportunity in in december to maybe join up with the uh, the santa event that was happening in uh at, at the um right in the middle of town so you know maybe, maybe uh between now and then we can look at you know really tailoring this to 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 maximize the in, in interactions and involvement so for each of those three discrete pieces there would be a a staff person kind of presenting here's what we are thinking so far here here are the things we'd like to get some feedback from you on and then collecting that data and then taking that back to the committee at a subsequent meeting to digest it right yeah uh, mm -hmm. and i found that the, with the sessions that we had 
we were kind of standing where it was available, which time to stand there, and then they had more questions and or explain our decisions a little deeper versus here's a piece of paper, read it, and tell me what you think, or to watch 10 videos. There's like, here's how we get to it. You know what I mean? We'd be a little more personal and you know, and get that kind of detail information that sometimes people just want to help because yeah. they know you work yeah. to think that you can share that with, or they're not going to say it in front of the six people standing in front of you. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? I'm we really concerned about pre-commitment membership tribe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, there we go. So I'll yeah. So I'll look at the events key that, that are around that time frame mm -hmm. that we may be offering. Okay. Eastern Fortune is really early this year. Easter is it's like, like the first. Uh, it's yeah. the 30th yeah. or something. Yeah, it's, the end of it's so early. Well, it's right it would have been perfect if it was mid-April like last year, because then we could have been in the gym with, with this group and then having you know 300 people on the other side doing Easter breakfast, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, so I'll look at a paired event that to kind of draw some or what else that is going on in town. Okay. So. All right. Anything else? We're good. Motion to adjourn. All right. <laughs> All favor. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Thank Thanks, Scott. Good night. Thank you, everyone.